everyone. So we are live in the Frock Group, the foot reading and reflexology online community, and we are about to press play on the second episode of the reflexology and foot reading podcast. And today my guest is the benevolent uh, and absolutely hysterical <laughs> Perry Cott. So we are totally about to get into it. Um, Hi I'm, guys. <laughs> And gals, we are we are totally not going to um, promise that we'll get to answer any questions. So if you would like your questions answered, feel free to just type them and know that we'll get back to them at a later date. I'm sure Carrie would love a chance to respond as well. But we're really yeah. going to be focusing on the, the recording of the podcast and talking about manifesting clients. Yes. So it's going to be awesome. You ready? I'm so okay. ready, Sam. Let's do this. But we're doing it. We are so doing it. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Reflexology and Foot Reading Podcast. I am your host, Sam Bellier, affectionately known by my clients and students as the Foot Whisperer. We're about to go deep with Carrie Cott, who is, if I had to describe her in a few words, a magical being who utilizes the power of feeling good to manifest through the law of attraction, her ideal lifestyle. She is the bubbly maven behind the universe made me do it, and is such a pleasure to have her energy, her presence in the Institute today. Thank you Welcome, so much, Carrie. Sam. I'm super <laughs> excited and happy to be here. Me too. And we talk about law of attraction and the universe and life. And... So, like, for everybody listening, give us the journey thus far. Like, what brought you from point A to point B? Kind of in this moment and really kind of give us the the summary as far as what we can expect to, to hear throughout the, the podcast in regards to that journey. Oh wow well that's a big journey. I know right? <laughs> like, how much time do we have? How much time do we have? Um do you want me to speak a little bit more on my business journey or uh, business and personal like give us the, the highlight reel. So highlight reel I am um, a big turning point in my life when I was 19, I had major surgery, which um, sent my life in a different journey. And I started exploring alternative medicine. Mm -hmm. And from that exploration, I continued to learn more about the body. And I quite, quite hadn't tapped into the emotional aspects of it, though I've always been intrigued by emotions. And um, the more that I explored that along my journey, I started opening myself up to emotional and energetic practices and mm -hmm. I started meditating and all these things started expanding and opening into my life. Yes. And meanwhile I was starting a business, I had taken my boards, I, you know, all the, adult stuff. all the adult stuff and still going on this personal journey within myself and um and it just continues to unfold, unfold. But I think we'll speak more to the specifics of, of that. Yeah, that's, you know, knowing your story ahead of time, it's, it's such a um, relevant experience for everybody today. Like the health crisis leads you into the path of self-discovery. Yeah. And then really it turns into this rabbit hole of, you know, not just discovering yourself, but discovering really how the universe works. And more importantly, sometimes doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, and kind of the rules <laughs> of the bigger game, as, as it were. Yeah. So if there was kind of one major lesson that you've learned over this this whole period of self-discovery, what would what would that one lesson kind of be as far as like the major nugget that your universe revolves around? Honor myself. Mm. That's the biggest one, is honoring myself, honoring where I am in any moment, honoring the happiness I might be experiencing, honoring the sadness I might be experiencing, and always honoring myself of what I need in this moment. I'd spent a lot of my life honoring what other people were asking of me and from me, and I was always doing based on that, and I was always deciding based on that. And it was coming from a place of fear and not love of myself or of that person. And so that continues to show up and in the past has shown up. And I, it's just more opportunity to honor myself wherever I am in that moment 
and be authentic with myself first. Yeah. I think especially for the, the people who are listening, like the reflexology journey is often, you know, a personal journey first. And yeah. once you discover that health and wellness and then you want to turn it to something bigger than you, um, but it all starts and ends with you. So this idea of kind of why I wanted you to talk on this topic as far as manifesting clients, like a lot of people get confused with that idea of how do I take the people out here or proceedingly out here mm -hmm. and bring them into my space so that I can share this, this knowledge, this gift, this, this story kind of with them. So what has you, what's it been like for you in regards to that? Oh, wow. Well, it started out really shitty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I um I opened up my business. I found a space, and then I just expected people to show up. Yeah. And um, at that point in my life, I, I, I had this story that, well, you know, I've never owned a business before, and, oh, you know, my parents kind of have their own businesses, but they live in a small town, and they know everyone, and here I just moved to this town, and I don't know anyone, and, of course, no one's showing up. That's just a story that I had in the space. And so that story was being reflected. And so I barely got any clients. And then I started working for another company. And I thought, okay, here's the space. This other company is going to provide me with the clients. And then that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. There wasn't like this big flooding in of these clients. Right. But I had also had this story in my space of not being worthy, not being good enough, not knowing what I was doing. There was... I, I was experiencing a lot of um, lack of self-esteem, worthiness, self-worth in that space. And so it was being reflected in my business. Right. It was being reflected in people not really showing up. They would show up at times when I would kind of open that space up energetically. At that time, I wasn't aware of it. I was just kind of experiencing it everything would always work out. I'd always get clients to pay my rent. And sometimes I'd right. be like, I don't know how that's going to happen. <laughs> I yeah. need some clients to pay my bills. And then magically, I can't even explain to you today how that would even happen. I don't even know if somebody showed up and paid me or what right. happened, but I just had the money to do it. And I lived in that space for a while. Do you find that, like, looking back, even the clients that did come in to see you, that you were really excited, you know, to be validated almost, like they weren't the quality of clients because they matched kind yeah. of what you were feeling? Yeah, I had a lot of clients cancel on me. Mm. I had lots of cancellations. Yeah. I was so thick in cancellations, and I was thick in people not wanting to pay me what my service, what I was charging for my services. So I was always discounting myself. And then the, the people I found, this is my personal experience, but the people I found I discounted, they were the ones canceling. They were the ones wanting to spend two hours with me instead of an hour. But I wasn't asserting myself, so I had spent that two hours with them and accepted less than 50% of what I was asking for. Right. And just kept accepting them and not communicating even after they were canceling on me. And so I was being reflected heavily in that, that regard of how I was feeling. Yeah. Um, and even the quality, even though there was this excitement, that was still in my space because I did have some of those clients in where it was just like things were in flow, but it was, it was maybe like 20%. So, um, yeah, that, that was, in, that was in the space of the quality. When you, you're using this word that I find super fascinating, reflective. Yeah. So when people think of like attracting clients and manifesting clients, there's almost like this underlying cultural theme that we have going on that that takes effort or work. Yeah. Um, and the, the way that you're talking about it is it's literally like standing in front of a mirror. Yeah. So go deep with that. Like what, what does, what does that mean to you? So, um, work and then being reflected. <laughs> um, so every single person that came to me was a reflection of who I was was an operating from and I had the belief that it was work to get clients. I thought that I needed to be out going to networking events, that I needed to have an ad somewhere, like I needed to I needed to be out there actively pursuing, like with the intention of I'm going out to this thing in order to meet potential clients. And 
And that was just a belief that I had in, in that space. And so it felt like work. And it felt like work to convince people that I had something to offer them. So that was in the space because I wasn't standing in my place of this is just who I am and the right people will come to me. I was standing in the place I was I was walking up to someone with this story in my space of this is work and I need to convince you because it's work for you to actually come and see me. And so what I would find is I encountered a lot of people who questioned me on what acupuncture was, is it placebo, is it this hoax, is it, does this really work, how much do you charge, oh, that's expensive, or I can't afford that. There was all this stuff that created work for me in the space. So then I'd have to go to the next season. And then I was like, well, no, I need to meet this person in order, maybe they'll get referrals that way. And then, um, when I joined BNI, I found that I had difficulty sharing referrals because I still had part of that story in my space that it was work. Scarcity. Yeah, that there was scarcity. And I also had this doubt that I could actually be referring people because I still had this junk in my space. I was still receiving clients and I still had abundance and flow. But I always tuned into when people were coming to me, it's because I was feeling good about that. Yeah. Hands down, I can always tell how I feel about myself by who's coming to see me, how many people, it's not so much about how many people, but the ease of which they show up, the ease of which the conversation flows, the ease of which they come to the appointment, everything is easy when I'm in a good state. When I'm not, people will change their appointment and sometimes that's because I want that to happen and sometimes it's like oh but I don't really have many people this week how am I feeling what do I have going on and really being a reflection again of what I have going on emotionally and energetically one of the reasons why I wanted to share just you with the world and especially with this this kind of following that uh the focus for a brand is starting to to attract because of my my mission and you know how I'm feeling and what my calling is that I tell my students all the time you are your book yeah. your your schedule and who you see is 100% you and athletes talk about this all the time when they're feeling on their game it's like they're not even playing with other players yes. you know so it's like how how do you personally find that space to where all external factors just fade? Well, external factors fading. Do they ever really fade? Mm -hmm. They kind of continue to show up and it's sure. about being in the space of being mindful of where I am at any moment. It's about being compassionate with myself because I can still have those external factors occurring but if I'm honoring myself it's not interfering with with how that's being reflected in my business yeah. when I'm not honoring that or I'm resisting something or I'm angry about something then that can have have a, a subtle shift now yeah. um I honor that space and meditate yeah. every day i um previously kind of meditated off and on i wasn't consistent with it but now that i've been meditating consistently that's a it's like this beautiful space of intention of i'm doing this for me i'm doing this for every single person that i'm going to encounter today i'm doing this that i get to be in a space of love to share with myself okay hold hold the phone so <laughs> when that is probably the best definition of meditation I have ever heard. So, I mean, in our in our society today, it's like people think of meditation as, you know, you have to be this austere monk sitting on a mountaintop somewhere chanting these things that you don't even know what they mean. And you just described meditation as just being about you. Like not needing to focus on anything just yeah. literally taking the time and what the word you keep using is space and i love that just meditation is about you yeah that's amazing thank you yeah and um i've been incorporating i wake up in the morning 
I'm covering this one thing. Okay. They say thank you. It's the first thing they say in the morning, and today is going to be the most amazing day of my life. And I did this experiment with myself yesterday. Was it yesterday? I think on a blend. <laughs> and I literally spent the whole morning and afternoon saying thank you to everybody. So thank you to the sign from the grocery store. Thank you to the floor. Thank you to the person in front of me driving a car. Thank you to my steering wheel. And I found that because I just said thank you to everything that I could look at, see, feel emotions. I said thank you for emotions mm -hmm. too. I realized that there was no space for what I didn't want to come in. Wow. It was like a like a appreciation of meditation. It's like that space and meditation of silencing the mind, that space between thoughts and silence that I was walking around with in my appreciation. And I was just so I was so basking in there was no space for something that didn't feel good that I didn't want to focus on to come in. Literally the whole time I was in appreciation and saying thank you, like thank you to this block, thank you to this teacup. There was just no space for any old story or anything to come in or any anything. And I was like, wow, this is like meditation. I just spent the morning like in appreciation like thank you. So when people are asking, you know, how to manifest clients, it, if they're maybe uncomfortable with the idea of meditation, don't even use the word. Just yeah. talk about being grateful. <clears throat> yeah, appreciation. Excellent. Abraham Hicks says that appreciation is a higher form of meditation. Wow. It's a more receptive, higher vibration than, than no thought. So meditation is no thought, but appreciation is the thought of everything beautiful around you which makes you, in essence, more attractive to those beautiful things. Right. And it has this beautiful collective energy of appreciation that it just draws more in. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and, and manifesting, the what I found is every time that I needed a client to show up, I was coming from a place of need or lack. Mm -hmm. um, and when it was that wouldn't it be nice if, or I would really like this, like two more clients this week, it opened up the space for it to come in. And so now I can look at my schedule or I can be in the space of, you know, I'd like to have two more clients this week. And I literally can, I like it when I look at my schedule and I can, vis I'm very visual, mm -hmm. so I can see it. And I'll say, I'd like one person there, universe, and then like two over there. And literally within that day, I'll get a phone call from, you know, a previous client or somebody new will call me or something will happen to where that space gets filled. Yeah, I did that just the other day. So um, Cody, Cody is uh, actually, you heard him in the previous episode. He's new to the bodywork world and he is also new to a lot of the, the ideas like, you know, law of attraction, client manifestation, but being in the body work field and not having like discovered the formal name and studies of it until mm -hmm. like the last three years or so. Um, I, I saw it happening before I, before I put a name to it. So I intentionally said, give me the space that I need to show Cody and to, to kind of prove that this is, this is legit. So this week I was staring on Monday at one appointment at, at 1030. And I said, I would like a minimum of three appointments, please, tomorrow. I woke up the next day. One person had booked online. Two people slid in. One ninja their way in through our <laughs> online scheduler. And the other one wanted to come in tomorrow, but just so happened that a meeting had canceled, so they were able to come in today. Yes. And everything just fit perfectly. And so yes. this, this idea is not just this pie-in-the-sky, like, uh, wishy-washy thing. It's subtle, yes, but it's a science. Yeah. So let's kind of use that idea of a science and talk about the science of storytelling. So how how would somebody start to work on some of those stories that maybe how to rewrite them intentionally or how to create a story that maybe they didn't even realize was possible? Oh, wow. So how do you create a story that you don't even know is possible? 
I have this favorite thing, um, what's available to me right here and now. And the intention behind that is these moments that I'm connecting to the universe and I'm saying what's available to me right here and now is to surprise and delight me. What am I unaware of that's available to me in this moment? So, um, you know, traditionally I had thought, you know, you do this networking stuff, this is how you get clients, blah, 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 blah. You do these things. Right. And so if you're coming from that space, this intention of the statement is show me, show me, show me what's around me mm. that I might not be seeing. And um, I just have so much fun with it because there's you could just bump into someone and have a conversation and they're like, oh, reflexology, tell me, I was just reading an article about that. Or you might feel guided, and that's the thing. A lot of times, it's we think it's going to come from a certain avenue. We might feel guided to go pull over at a park one day, and there just happens to be somebody sitting there that we start up a conversation, and maybe they've been looking for someone to refer to for reflexology, or maybe they wanted it themselves, or maybe it was just an open dialogue that they're like, hey, I'd like to introduce you to this person. And then that just opens up something. Perfect example. So the about three months or so ago i had this idea and i was i was playing i you're 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 getting this theme of like play right so i was playing with this idea you know what would really scratch the itch that i'm feeling right now <laughs> is if i could work with some of the lightning players yeah yeah so i thought you know what lightning is a local hockey team they're starting to get really well known um, uh, growing up, they definitely weren't. So like that, that idea of touching fame um, and working with high profile individuals. And so I thought, you know what, let's, let's just put that out there. I'm thinking, you know, visualizing that experience, understanding the feeling of appreciation for what that would bring in the door, what it would mean to me personally, and just chewing on that, chewing yeah. on that appreciation. And so literally within a week, I had a client come in who said, oh, by the way, I'm applying for a job tomorrow with the owner of the Lightning's company, and he will be in the room. And I was like, that's it. <laughs> I, I don't need to work with the Lightning. I just, I needed that, that spark. Yeah. Like, it was that, I just needed to feel that juice. Yeah. And so I had attracted what I needed, but then also gotten what I wanted through the process. So it's, yeah. I mean, sometimes you have no idea what it is you really want until you pull it into your space and you realize, okay, that I'm satisfied. That's yeah. that's totally it. I have um, an amazing story to share yeah, that's go similar for it. that just happened. So I've been um, transitioning my career and um, moving more towards being a living coach and really immersing with someone in their space and going deep with them. And um, I had received this idea about six months ago. And so I just allowed it to continuously like form in my mind and um, I've been inspired lately to, to play in imagination and I like to do it after I meditate because I've reached this quieting in my mind, this higher vibration. And it's more like I receive the thoughts of my imagination instead of sitting around like, what do I want to imagine? Because if I sat around and said, what do I want to imagine? Like hundreds of things are going to come in and I'm like, which one do I choose? Right. <laughs> so I've been intentionally imagining after I meditate. I've been imagining what it's like to experience this client that I'm desiring to, to happen. And um, so I've been just playing in imagination, feeling it, being there, how much fun it is, how much freedom, flexibility, everything that's in the space. And there was a price point attached to it, it was $10,000. Yeah. And so I just stayed in the space of what that experience is like. And then my friend who I had shared this story with, like, this is the price point that came to me. This is how it looks. This is how it feels. She literally contacted me a couple of days later and she said, you can't make this stuff up here. She said, I was talking to a client of mine and he's like, I need a live-in coach and I would pay them $10,000 to come work with me. Oh my God. And I was like, confirmation, confirmation. And it was like, there it was. 
there it was. It, it was, and it's that's the thing. It's the manifestation of that that is the manifestation. Yes. Whether or not this person actually becomes that client, he is a confirmation, a manifestation, a client along the way. Yeah. He still could transform into that. It may not be the right fit, but it was, I'm getting ready to be more ready to more ready. And so it's just that piece along the trail, like mm -hmm. with the lightning, that the lightning might transform into, probably will transform into clients of yours, right. but it's that piece along the trail. It's like you're on the train going to Alberta, Canada, and you just stop somewhere to just breathe in mountain air, and mm -hmm. you're not there yet, but it doesn't matter because right there is so fucking beautiful. Yeah. So that was like confirmation of there it is. There it is. Perfect. Yeah. This so let's talk about this kind of client attraction process. And some of our listeners are wondering kind of whether they should just be seeing friends and family or whether they should go into business for themselves. And there might be a little bit of pressure attached one way or another. Mm -hmm. So how do you find especially when you're practicing a craft that you feel very drawn to, how do you find your sweet spot? Life journey. Yeah, life journey, <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> um, being okay with whatever spot I'm in in the moment. So um, I have found when I first started that um, – Working with friends and family was not my sweet spot. It was it was an easy spot because I already knew them. Right. But it wasn't the sweet spot for me in being authentic with them and what I was tuning into for them or working with them. So I my this is only speaks of only me personally, right. but my experience was is I held myself back. Okay. Could I work with a family or a friend now? Absolutely, because I've created that that space and it's a, it's about trying it out you just have to experience it you have to have a session with your mom and see how you feel about that right maybe there's stuff in the space between you being really present with her in that session or maybe there's a friend you just have to you just it's like clothing you guys gotta go try it on and see how it feels and then honor that so you asked what was the thing at the root is honoring yourself I love that. and so what I do now is I tune into it before it happens. How does it feel for me before it's happening? Does this feel like something I want to explore? Does this feel right? And asking myself that question, if it's yes, then I work with that person. If it's no, then I don't work with that person. Maybe it's not yet. Maybe it's not time. So it just might not be that right time. Or maybe it's just no in general. No, I don't want to work with you, family member or friend, because it's not right for me because yeah. there's a different dynamic when it's a family or a friend. Um, but that could also be a, a baby in this case. Sure. Um, but there's different, a different level of relationship. So it's like feeling out the yeses. Yes. So the yeses become like breadcrumbs to direct you into kind of the perfect place for you to be at that moment. Yeah, and sometimes the yes might lead you into the experience of this didn't work out very well because the yes needed to, you needed the yes to go there to find out, ooh, I like this about this experience. This didn't work out so well. Why didn't this work out so well? And why did this work out so well? And then taking those pieces and continuing along the trail. But always honoring yourself of that was an amazing experience. That was a good experience for me to have. Um, I didn't play so nice with myself back in the day with that. I kind of would beat myself up. But yeah. now if I have an experience like that, which it's not even that type of experience. It's just like, wow, that was in the space. Mm -hmm. Okay, that felt really awesome. That didn't so much. But that doesn't even matter because that was necessary for the space. Yeah. And even... Um, I always wanted to make sure that everything went smoothly. But sometimes that client is asking for an experience that isn't that smooth. Right. Maybe they're asking for you not to do the job that you know that you provide. Mm. And so they might not have the experience. They come in yes. and then they're like, I didn't really like this, which is irrelevant 
to the practitioner because they're having their own individual experience and they might be reflect that I can't be helped or I'm not deserving to feel good. You always have to consider what's in their space. And I used to take what their story was and make it my own of, oh, I'm just not that great. I need to be helped. I need to do better. I need to communicate differently. And it was, no, we're reflecting what we're both thinking and feeling that I have going on. I love that. Because especially whenever we get into this idea of, you know, being the therapist, being the caregiver, being the person that needs to take care of someone else, we think that it's our job to make them feel better. Um, yeah. And we attach ourselves to whether or not they feel better, despite us not being, you know, having such a strong attachment like an MD would. Um, but even in, like, especially if you watch any of the major medical kind of TV shows that are out right now, there's always this episode where the doctor has to detach themselves from the patient outcome. Yeah. And I think we so need to, as practitioners who are in the health and wellness field, remember that the client is asking not for us, but for an experience that is facilitated by, just so happens to be facilitated by, our unique presence. Yeah. Yeah. And um, something that I hold in my space now is that no matter what that person has going on, they're going to feel better when they leave. To what degree is completely up to them, but I know that they'll feel better on some regard. And so I just hold that in my space that no matter what happens, they're just going to feel better. Whether it's they walk away still with the pain that they came in, they're going to feel better on some level. And so I just hold that in my space of that it's irrelevant if it's completely gone or if it's still there, that no matter what, they're just going to feel better. Back to that full circle idea of kind of the stories we tell ourselves and those external factors. You know, a client is ultimately, at the end of the day, an external factor. It's yeah. something that's outside of you, which you cannot ultimately control. So, yeah. you know, and this is especially when we get into some of the people that have spoken extensively on the, the topic of manifestation, they remind us that when we pull something into our space, it's an echo of a previous thought. Yeah. So it's not even a current reflection most times. It could be something that started seeding a really long time ago yeah. that is even more present because of the contrast of how good you're feeling right now. So yeah. like you said, the, the journey of it all is really yeah. important. Yeah, and you know, reflecting, um, reflecting on who my clients are today, versus who they used to be, they're night and day. Um, because I, I, when things come up, I, I do the work as they come up in my own personal life. And my, my clients are such a reflection of who I am now. And, um, and I just know and trust that who's ever being attracted to me is for the right reason. And they're being attracted to me because of what I have to offer. And, um, it used to be I, I was attracting them because I felt like I needed to prove myself. And so I would have to prove myself. And now it's just, I just know that they're ready for whatever I have to share that's in the space. And I just trust it. And it's so amazing because somebody will come in with something that I just experienced similar. Right. You know, it's never the same, but something so similar to what I just experienced or a conversation I just had two hours ago. And here this person is sitting in front of me and saying, I have this going on and this doesn't feel good. And I, I'm like, perfect. I have some different tools now to help assist you through that process. And through that process, I heal and expand and grow myself because I also get to share, but I also get to see what else is in the space for me. Yeah. So every time I say something to a client, I'm listening for the message for me because they're a reflection. We're both a reflection for each other. I love that. So what what you're kind of explaining is this deeper level to the manifestation work is not just, you know, I need a client, yeah. let me pull in this client, but actually like looking at the people that you're pulling yeah. and listening to them as a reflection of either what you need to learn, how you need to grow. Yeah. Um, you know, and the story that really captures this for me is that my clients called me the foot whisperer 
before I even thought that that was where, you know, the business was going. So it's like sometimes the clients are the voice of the universe yes. for, from that standpoint. And so what you're pulling in isn't just, it's not just about pulling in more in order to make bankroll. Yeah. It's about listening to their messages. Absolutely. Cause there are teachers too. Right. Every, every person is our teacher and you're teaching them and sharing with them too. But it's a, it's, it's where giving becomes receiving in the same moment. Mm. It's that's the sweet spot. Oh my gosh, if I could talk about a sweet spot, giving and receiving in the same moment, same moment. So every time I interact with just anyone but a client in particular, because that's what we're talking about, like it's such a gift for me because when I get to share who I am, right. I get to work with my intuition in just like this really in depth place one-on-one -on -one with this person and I get to learn and expand too I always take something beyond that away I take where they are and what they have going on they're ready their willingness the story they share with me all of that I take that and what's in the space for me too so it's like this giving receiving sweet spot in the moment at the same time you know and when we think of like maybe some uh, some guideposts along the way that are letting you know that you're not on the right track. So some of those might be, you know, as opposed to the equal giving and receiving, like the draining of energy, yeah. feeling like you got hit by a bus after a session, you know, the, God, the feeling, so I know, right? <laughs> oh. The bus ran me over oh. this session. There we go. We got, we got Carrie in the shot now. Uh, so as far as, you know, <laughs> things to look out for, like, besides like the energy drain, like what are some other signs from the universe that maybe you've experienced to say, no, do not pass go. This is not where we, we need you to be. Um, emotions, oh. emotions, your emotional guidance system, your mm -hmm. emotions tell you where you are. Um, emotions, emotions, emotions. Um, if you feel good, it's a good thing. If you don't feel good, then there's something there in this space. It doesn't mean what's happening is bad. Mm -hmm. It can mean how I'm looking at this feels bad. Um, maybe I'm not asserting myself. Maybe I'm not communicating like I would desire to. What's in that space of that emotion of this doesn't feel good? But also acknowledging if something does feel good, why does that feel good? So that was the part of me that I continued to ignore in, in the past when I would feel drained, like I was hit by a bus right <laughs> by that experience was my emotions. Was I doing things that didn't feel good to me? I'd spent a lot of my life doing things that didn't feel good to me because I was afraid to communicate who I was. And so that continued into the reflection of my clients. So would I be spending more time with them than I really wanted to while charging them less? So that didn't feel right to me until I felt drained. Was I, were they talking about something that activated something from my past within me and I was, I was not even being present because I went back to this, to a story of myself. Yeah. And so the emotions, your emotions let you know where you are. And just because it doesn't feel good doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Like what is happening is bad. It's what story, what conversation with myself is in the space that I'm choosing to create this as something that doesn't feel good. Awesome. So, so there really is no bad clients. No, <laughs> no way. No way. All of them are amazing and beautiful. Because they're reflecting something. It's just whether or not we take the time to actually listen to that reflection. Yeah, and, and appreciating them. Like, are they reflecting some story or some aspect that you see in your mom that you just can't stand? And now you're like, I can't stand clients. Like, oh, they annoy me. Well, why do they annoy you? It's showing you. Yeah. yeah. And so it's an opportunity to allow compassion for yourself and them in that moment. I had a client one time come to me and for whatever reason I would feel irritated when she would show up and I was like, well, what is this about? Like she's this lovely, beautiful person. And I was like, why am I feeling irritated? 
why am I feeling irritated? So I just asked myself that question, whether or not I actually know in that moment. Mm -hmm. But I just kept asking within the second session that I saw her, it became clear to me what was in the space. And it, had, it never has anything to do with that person is that I was offering something. I wasn't quite in the space of alignment of this feels good to me, but I was doing it anyway. Right. So it was just another reflection of I'm doing something that I don't really want to be doing or I don't prefer. Let's let's kind of go into this. I'm I'm really hitting this this chord hard internally as you're as you're speaking about it. This idea that we sometimes identify as healers, as people who are supposed to be, you know, benefiting the world. Yeah. But in order to work with somebody else on that level, you also need to be going through an equally healing journey. Yeah. And if you're not recognizing your side of the scale, as far as the work that you need to be doing inside, then you're going to attract clients that are also not going to recognize that they need to pick up some homework and, and do some self-reflection and receive the work as well. So it's, you know, especially when you have that client that's not moving forward or you, you've been seeing them for a couple of years maybe, or you just feel like you've hit a wall with them, they're reflecting that, that lack of healing in you and mirroring that perfectly always. Yeah, absolutely. First, be a benefit to yourself to be a benefit of others. Mm -hmm. and actively being in that space of doing our own work as healers because we're not immune to life we get to experience it too but that's how we get to share it with other people right yeah awesome so as far as like besides the honoring of yourself any other tips or tricks that you can maybe give to the, the listeners to really jumpstart this idea of how they can manifest their ideal clients? Um, you know, write down what they look like. Mm -hmm. Make a list, like tangibly put something on paper. I remember the first time I was told to do this. I, I wasn't in the space of, for my ideal client, so I like I couldn't really do it. Yeah. I would just sit there with a piece of paper and I was like, okay, yeah, blah, blah, blah. That's what they look like. But I didn't believe it. Yeah. Um, so I would suggest writing down like what you appreciate in people. It could be just as simple as that. Like what do I appreciate in people translating into what do I, what would I appreciate in a client? Mm -hmm. So I used to look at it as like what they look like. Too. So, like, the, some of the exercises were, like, how much money did they make? What did they dress like? That stuff, just, I couldn't get there. Yeah. So, what's coming to me now is writing down what what you appreciate in a person just in general. It's finding that appreciation, you're going to attract that in a client. And even reflecting on who am I? What do I appreciate in myself when I'm working with someone who's a healer? Yes. That, ooh, that feels really good yeah, to does. explore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, and this brings up this idea that, you know, when we think of, like, especially going back to that idea of marketing or networking, which is an intentionally scarcity mindset, you yeah. know, everybody's looking for the lead, the referral, you know, the, the, the business that supposedly all of our competitors are stealing from us. But if you're focused on who you are and what you want, chances are you put 10 people in a room and they're going to want 10 very different things. Yeah. Not everybody wants to win the lottery. Some people want to spend more time with family. Other people can't stand spending time with family and yeah. they'd rather be on an island somewhere kind of alone and isolated and self-reflective. So it's, it's very much about feeling what feels good to you and then taking that to the next level by getting specific yeah. and making sure that your everything that you're focused on truly feels good and authentic. Yeah. And since they're all reflections, tuning into what are those things that we appreciate about it now. Yeah. So let's get into the topic of money. Yeah. Uh, when clients come in, it's often with a price tag, like yeah. you had said. How do we work with this feeling of money being a factor and also this idea of maybe we feel like we're undervaluing or overvaluing ourselves how do we find that monetary sweet spot well i've had <laughs> a fun journey with this one okay. <laughs> um because that was that was 
not one of the, it was one of the biggest things in the space between me and Les Myers. Mm -hmm. um, was this story about money. I come and created in my life a uh, you know lack consciousness, and um, so when I started charging, I didn't believe I was worth that. So naturally, I attracted people who didn't want to pay for my services. So that was again being reflected. Um, and then again, I just tuned into the emotions. How do you feel about it? So, and I kind of felt like money shouldn't be in the space of healing. I'd had that belief. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I, I would ask yourself, how do you feel about money? How do I feel about money? How do I feel about money when I'm going to a service? Mm -hmm. Do I feel like I want to pay them? So if I'm going to go see a reflexologist, am I happy to spend X amount of dollars? Do I want to pay them $75 for a session? How does that feel for me? Right. Um, how do I feel about going to the grocery store and buying a whole basket full of food? Like really tuning into how do I feel about money? How do I feel about my bank account? What's in the space of the conversation with me and money? Because it's not about what that other person wants to do. It's about who you're being. And when I was walking around in the story of I'm not worth this, it was being reflected. Right. And then I moved into a space where I created a price point that I felt was too much, and, but I was feeling guided to, but I wasn't ready until I did it. Mm -hmm. And then I felt the discord of that. And then I felt like, oh, nobody wants to pay me that. And so my clients kind of dwindled down and I was like, I got to get in alignment with whatever price point I choose and I have to feel good about it. I get to choose whatever price that I want and then I get to feel good about it. But I get to feel good about it first. Right. Before. You are like that. So we have to feel good about it before it can actually happen. And so how do you, it, again, it goes into like some, some self-worth of how do I feel about myself and what I'm doing. And acknowledging and being in the space where you let money be a part of it. Because it's a gift. You're providing a service. And when somebody else provides you a service, how do you feel about that service? Like, are you appreciative of your electric bill when you write that check or however you pay for it? Like, they're providing a service. And I used to have this belief or a societal belief, something about healing services and money. Right. Or some spiritual thing and money. But there's nothing more spiritual than abundance. tangible things yeah. and experiences and abundance and prosperity. So it really just comes down to evaluating how you feel about money, what's in the space. And then feeling your way towards that ideal price point that's, you know, not too high, which you could always work up to. Yeah. But some people are doing this, you know, I have quite a few students that frankly don't need the money. Yet they practice anyway because it's what they want to do. Yeah. And so they take the money as an energetic exchange to make sure that the client is valuing the service. Yeah. You know, but at the same time there are other people where it's like, you know, this is their living. And so they charge a little bit more, but they feel comfortable with that because yeah. either they own their own space or they have children to feed and they know that the money isn't selfishly kind of just for the purpose of having more money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's also about there's always a perfect match for us no matter where we go so um one of my apprentice healing teachers told me that somebody char or somebody she knows charges i think 500 dollars for a session and she is totally booked for months because she's in that space of that's that's a sweet spot for her where right. some somebody else to jump into 500 dollars a session wouldn't feel good and then I know people who charge, you know, $60 a session for something, and they're totally in abundant space. So it's really about honoring yourself and what feels right for you, because there's always a match. Just someone out there, someone, multiple people out there, are going to gravitate to you for what you have to offer and be such in the space of whatever your price point is irrelevant. That's the sweet spot, is attracting people that price is, is, is irrelevant. Price just naturally comes in the space of who you are because they're coming to you for what you're providing, not based on, oh, you only charge this much, so I'm going to go to you because you charge this much. 
So that's more of making a decision on money versus what feels right. Right. And so honoring that. And it doesn't matter how much, in my perspective, it doesn't matter how much you charge. You could charge $60 or $500, but if you feel good about it and there's the perfect match people that are coming to you and whatever you're providing, then they're all the right fit. Love it. Yeah. So to kind of wrap up, where are you trying to affect the world right now? Right now, like what is what is the mission for for Carrie, and uh, and kind of the the attractive work that that you're doing? Well, um, I've actually been going deeper within this for myself. Mm -hmm. So I talked about transforming where I am and with my career, and that's just a piece of it. But what what's really coming more and more to the surface is I want to be interacting with people moment to moment, day to day, inspiring and being present with them. Like at their root, that's something that I've been imagining and fantasizing about and, and experiencing more and more is that when I'm walking down the street, like I'm consciously smiling and connecting with people and I'm stopping to talk to people that I feel gravitated to, which normally I might have just walked by and I'm having this beautiful conversation and just sharing energy. So even at the most basic level, just being present with people like um i was reflecting on you know there's a lot of these missions you go to other countries and you help you know these tribes or people that are destitute and i was just really reflecting the past few days about how that that person down the street sitting at the desk at that lawyer's office is just they're asking for things too they're asking for something in their life whether it's more love or to feel better about something and i was just like i just want to be in a space where i'm so like ready and open to connect with those people and when i'm walking by somewhere i want to just stop and go talk to them because that's what i feel guided to do and i want to stop and talk to them for five minutes or two hours and just be present with them in the space of walking and breathing and living and being how i love to help people Mm -hmm. And a part of my career shift was that I wasn't so much into the client after client after client, or here's my day, client, client, client. I was just, this, I just want to be more interjected in my day to day moment right. of being present and sharing what I have to offer and, and gifts and ins inspiration is in that space. Okay. And it's been happening. I have, like, I'm just meeting people on the street and sharing conversation and then hearing from them a few days later and they're like wow this is like this conversation that we had has really transformed this that I have going on and um wow you really inspired me to blah 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 and I'm like that's my sweet spot of where I am moving into awesome. all this other stuff is fun and, and a part of that but that's that's how I've been sharing with the world so how can our listeners connect with you? What what channels are you currently operating on besides <laughs> you know, the, the universal carry hotline? 800 carry hotline. There you go. <laughs> Trademark it. Um, well, I'm on Instagram. I love Instagram. The universe made me do it. Um, I'm also on Facebook. Carrie Cod. Um, I do have uh, the Universe Made Me Do It Facebook page, but I'm more active on my personal page, so you can friend request me. Um, I typically, when guided, um, write, and I like to write from inspiration and sharing something that usually it's something I'm personally, obviously, I'm personally experiencing it. Um, so I like to share in that way through my writing. Um, that shows up on Facebook and Instagram. You can also check out my website, the Universe Made Me Do It. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being here, Carrie. Oh um, my gosh. I, when the, I asked Carrie to be on the show, I was just inundated with this idea that there are people listening right now. I was about to say watching, but obviously you can't watch podcasts. Um, <laughs> yeah, unless you're watching the, the recording that we're doing on Facebook Live right now. But there's this idea that, you know, the, the message that you have is, is touching so many people in such a real way and i think that especially in this space we're looking for people to be that beacon and i definitely think that you are that beacon mm -hmm. so thank you so much for being here i sincerely appreciate it you're so uh, welcome sam remember i'm your reflection there you okay. go <laughs> takes one to know one <laughs>
Uh, so that is it for this episode of the Reflexology and Foot Reading Podcast. Thank you all for listening. Be sure to tune in and subscribe. Follow us on all of the Foot Whisperers social media channels. Uh, until next time, may the feet be with you. <laughs> oh, just under an hour. So... That was the podcast. <laughs> oh, goodness. So apparently we we're having some uh, Facebook glitchy issues. The camera wasn't on you at one point, but oh, we were shit. just in the moment, <laughs> just chilling. So thank you to everybody who is uh, still watching. And we will uh, keep this video live for anybody who wants to watch the replay. I'll also probably pull it down and stick it on the YouTube channel as well. So, and I'm sure that as comments come up, Carrie will be watching it and she'll be able to jump on and uh, talk a little bit about what she, uh, what she thinks and questions is. Yeah. We all done? Yeah. Awesome. We are complete. We are complete. <laughs> Hashtag complete. <laughs> <laughs>